Hi guys, Tom Hunt here in the kit room and today's subject has been a question asked on the YouTube channel by someone called Random Guy um, and he asked the question, what are the best coloured lures for clear water situations? Um, so previously I've made one on the best coloured lures for dirty water situations. So have a look back in my library if you want to check that one out. Um, but today is going to be all around clear water situations. Um, but before we get onto it, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of the community out there. Um, I hadn't posted a video for about three months because I've been concentrating on family life. I've just had a baby boy. And the number of amazing comments I had on the first uh, video that I released a uh, few days ago, um, first video in a long time, uh, loads of people said, congratulations on your baby boy, you know, and you guys are just awesome. So thanks for interacting on the channel. Uh, I really love trying to get back to everyone, really love trying to pass across a few tips and help you with your fishing. But I've got to be honest, for me, YouTube is just an amazing platform. It's full of awesome people that are really, really positive. I hardly get any negative comments on my channel at all. And that's not like a lot of other social media platforms where they end up in arguments and people are negative and whatever. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say a massive thanks to you to start with. But let's get on to um, let's get on to colours that I use in uh, clear water. Now, there's an old adage for me. All right. And if you're a beginner out there and you walk into a shop and there's just walls and walls of different lures and different colours, just break it down. Keep it simple. Remember this old adage. Break it down into two categories for clear water. All right. You want to use natural coloured baits. So something like that realistic roach very very natural looking bait and for colored water use something a bit brighter and you're gonna struggle to go wrong with something like fire tiger it's got orange it's got yellow and it's got bright green in it okay um, and the reason for that is in colored water the visibility is not as good so they can home in on those bright colors much much easier and in clear water which we're going to get into now um you really want to be, you know, th those predators, they're apex predators and they're very, very tuned in to what's in their environment. And when they've got clearish water, so let's define, let's put it in two or three different categories. So for me, coloured water is between kind of a couple of inches visibility uh, and say 18 inches, a foot to 18 inches. Once I'm up to like a foot, 18 inches, two foot, I'd start to call that sort of semi-clear. And then between sort of two and a half to say five foot, I'd call that clear. And then from five foot plus, and I fish some venues in this spring, for example, we could see the bottom in 10 foot of water. Um, that's what I'd call ultra clear. And I do make a, a color selection slightly differently as it goes through from, from kind of semi-clear to clear to ultra clear, all right? But basically those fish are super tuned into their environment and when they've got the visibility to be able to see what they're hunting, you know, um, you do wanna try and make it replicate the type of thing that they're feeding on. And I'll come to that in a second, because um, there is a couple of uh, lures that I've got down here that I'll show you, which have been absolutely magic for me in the last couple of years. Uh, uh, but I will, I'll come on to that in a second. So for me, if I was starting at kind of like semi-clear, um, I'd look to maybe start on something like this. So this is official roach, all right? You can obviously see there, he's got quite a sort of golden or, or almost yellow sides to it but I'd still categorize this as a natural color. It's got a little bit of orange on the belly, but think about that. Think about roach, rudd, and even perch. They've, they've all got orangey, reddy kind of fins, all right? So for me, although that's quite a bright color on the side and he's got an orange belly, it still comes into the natural category for me. But if the water was super clear, I think that would be a little bit too much, that orange, and that, that full side of, of kind of gold is just a little bit too much. And I'll move on to that, what I would use in a second. But for that kind of like uh, a one to two and a half foot of visibility, it's just visible, it's a visible enough in that clarity of water, but it's still kind of natural. 
Another one that I'm a massive fan of and probably is my go-to in the Western range uh, uh, virtually every time I start is, is going to be Headlight. All right. And the reason that I love this is because, as you can see, like anything with a bit of silver in, I'm a big fan of. All of the, the best eating, the best prey fish, so things like your roach, your skimmers, bleak, um, chub to a certain degree, little chublets, they are so easy for those pike and perch to eat. There's no spines like you get on a perch. There's nothing spiky around the door, like they're soft, they're soft raid um, baits and they I'm sure they're very, very tasty. So for me, an absolute classic is gonna be starting with something with a little bit of silver on it. Now, if you think about it, we've got, we've got some reflection in here. We've got some flake, yeah, or, or some glitter, um, which is a little bit different to the official roach. So again, this is a distinction I really want to make and I'll come on to it because I'll make this point again when we go on to ultra clear water. But for semi clear water or, or, or just clear water, this is a solid bait. All right. So if I hold it up to the light, I've got a full silhouette. I cut, and There's no light that reflects through it. And you, the darker the water or the more coloured the water, you want to use a solid colour because it silhouettes so well. So, for example, if you were going to take a 10 centimetre coloured bait, a 10 centimetre natural bait and then a 10 centimetre clear style bait or see through translucent style bait. I would argue that although they're all exactly the same size, for me, the colour, the fire tiger is going to represent a bigger bait. All right. The, the 10 centimeter in headlight, for example, I'd say is about bang on for 10 centimeters. And I'd say if you were gonna go for something uh, super see-through like this on Stanley the Stickleback, even if that was a 10 centimeter bait, but in that color, I would say it represents something a little bit smaller and a little bit more finesse. Um, really, really important point there. Um, as you, so, my selection would be nice and solid, little bit of colour, but still natural. Uh, moving up to when I'm in that kind of two to say four or five foot zone, this is going to be an absolute killer for me. Um, it's got a little bit of translucency across the top, a little bit of that silver flake, but it's got a solid belly. And like I said, no, uh, there's no orange on the belly. So there's nothing super garish about this color that's really going to kind of put them off if they can see it from a long, long way away. There's an old adage in fly fishing called match the hatch. All right. And in that scenario, uh, you've got one day you might have a bloodworm coronamids hatching, which are small buzzers like um, sort of mosquito type baits. The next day it might be beetles are really active or it might be dragonflies. And match the hatch principle is those trout, when they're feeding on certain things that are hatching, they're, all, they're like tunnel vision. If, if there's bloodworm that's hatching into small midges, that's all they do. They're just focused on going around, mopping up all of those blood worm and you won't get a bite on virtually anything else. The next day, a completely different hatch might be on and they're super tuned in to a different fly or a different beetle or a different bug or nymph. All right. So that's that's the principle in, in fly fishing. And I would argue that it's similar in, in predator fishing. So matching the hatch on what they're feeding on it can be really, really important. All right. So um, a big distinction for me is going to be around um, roach or perch. Now, a lot of the venues that I fish are, have a lot of perch in them. And I don't know whether it's cormorants, not sure if it's too many predators or, or diseases, but it feels like a lot of the silver fish populations have gone down in the venues that I fish. Um, I still think where silverfish are available, they are going to be the number one preferred style bait um, that those, those pike and perch and zander want to feed on. But sometimes, especially when the per if the perch hatch has been very good, they are absolutely everywhere across these venues and, um, and they do get super tuned into them. So even for a natural bait, a silver is one of my go-tos. I've had days before with my boat partner, Kev Cox. We had one at 
Chew Valley a couple of years ago. We had 23 pipe to the boat, uh, including I had a 23 pounder. I think he had a 21 or a 22 pounder. We had a few other doubles, loads of small ones. Out of the 23, I reckon 21 of them were caught on perch style baits. Didn't matter what type it was, we caught on chatter baits, soft baits, hard baits, but anything with perch on it. So a little bit of green, some stripes on it, a little bit of red or orange on the belly maybe. Um, yeah, like a bling perch, for example, was killer for me on that day. In fact, that exact bait was what caught me a, my 23 pounder, that, that st uh, Shad T Slim in 14 centimetres. Um, so yeah, tuning in to match the hatch also, especially when it's clear, the clearer it is, the more they're tuned into a certain style of bait, the less you're going to get bites on baits that don't represent exactly what they're eating. So always be aware of that. And then going through that to kind of that five foot to 10 foot, say, visibility, um, I'm always looking to try and select a bait that is the least amount of garish, all right? So even on my headlight, for example, it's still quite a sort of solid bait. Um, and, and these are the colors that I love moving across to. So this is the sparkling green. So I'm not sure if you can see there, but you might be able to see my finger behind it. So when I hold it up to the light, I can get, it's, it's quite translucent. I'm getting a lot of light going through it. Like I said before, it, it makes it feel like in that ultra clear water when they've got a lot of time and the best conditions to be able to inspect all your bait and everything from a long way away. I think you have to go for things as finessey and natural as possible. You have to think about coming down in your jig head size, coming down in your physical size of your lure, coming down in your wire, if you're pike fishing, your braid, trying to make everything as natural as possible. And part of that is selecting colours that have got a little bit of see through to them. All right, because I just feel it makes the bait a little bit smaller in, in the amount of presence that it's got. Um, but also just lets a little bit of light through and just you know, isn't that kind of solid garish uh, um, uh, kind of colour or, or amount that it kind of silhouettes the light. Just think it's a little bit more natural. So uh, that for me is a cracker. And in Stanley, the stickleback, I've got um, sparkling grey here. You can probably, you should be able to see that. This is probably one of the most see-through lures I've got. It's hardly got any colour in it, um, but flake size as well. So I'm going to give you a close up on this. The clearer the water yeah, the smaller your flake size because it reflects the light the least amount. It gives a little bit of a shimmer to the bait rather than a, a full kind of like flash. If you have a look here on this one, for example, you can probably see there how big the green flake is there because when I'm fishing in that coloured water, not much light is penetrating into it. So any light that comes in, I want these. They're like little mirrors. I want bigger mirrors when it's because I want to draw attention to it because they can't see it from very far away. When they can see it from very far away, I want a small flake because it's a tiny mirror, gives a little bit of a shimmer rather than, you know, shining a bright torch straight back in their eyes, which they're not going to be interested in. So even down to the size of the flake that you've got in your baits, think about how much light it's reflecting. Um, probably one thing to talk about with silver is when you've got a good amount of sunlight and you've got anything more than, say, two foot of visibility, um, Silver is going to be probably the most key bait for me. I think traditionally over the years they have fed so much on those nat chublets, roach, skimmers, bleak, that type of stuff. That is their main number one forage. I think when there's a silver flash in the water, there's something instinctual that makes them react to that, that type of colour. All right. So for me, that is why I will never go fishing without unless spinners are banned on that water i'll never go fishing without a standard spinner in my box all right especially a silver one gold ones are okay but for me silver is the color um and even though it's the 
is as old as the hills, a standard inline kind of MEPS style spinner. That is the type of bait that can always get you out of jail when nothing else is working. Um, you know, it's just, it's got that silver flash and I think it's appealing to their deepest DNA hunting instinct. And when you get a little bit of silver flash, if there's a little bit of sunlight, that can be absolutely mega in turning a very not interested fish into bop coming up and hitting it. Um, yeah, really, really important point that. So think about the silver colors, especially silver flake. Now, um, in terms of um, when we've got clear water, but I would potentially break the old adage, the old rule of um, when would I fish a bright color, but in clear water? That for me is when the water can be warm or when we've got incredibly long days. So generally this is in the summer, so it can be right now. The sun comes up at 4, 4.30, 5 a.m. They're feeding very, very hard, probably between 4 and 6 a.m. And then they've got a gut full of food. There's loads of fry, loads of invertebrates, loads of food out at this time of year. So they are feeding incredibly heavily and uh, at the beginning of the day. And then they sit there often, it's very sunny conditions. It gets a little bit too warm for them, especially in clear water. And they go very dormant for most of the day. And then they might come back on again in the evening. So when you go fishing in the summer, a lot of people say to me, the water's warm, everything's active and I couldn't get a bite. They're not feeding. That's actually a slightly incorrect assessment. They are feeding, in fact, they're feeding so heavily at the beginning of the day when you're often not there, that they're then just sat around, they've got a gut full of food and they're just not in the mood through most of the middle of the day. Now, when that happens, reaction style baits, big, garish, horrible, leery colors are what you wanna put on, all right? So you can probably see here the buzz bite so I'm a mega crankbait fisherman, particularly I find they're most effective when the water gets over about 15 degrees and that has been chewed to hell. And I use, I fish a lot of clear water venues and this has been absolutely mega for me. But the one thing you have to remember, if you're going to fish any of these style baits in clear water, do not fish them slow. Do not even fish them medium. You have to fish them almost as fast as you can wind them because in that clear water, they see it coming from a long way away and you're looking for an instinctual, what I call reaction or a territory strike rather than a feeding strike. You're not offering this up saying, hey, here's a perch or here's a roach that you want to eat. It looks nothing like that. What you're trying to say is you cast it out, get into those areas where you've got good numbers of fish around and fish it really quick, bang it around in the weed, bang it around off the rocks, stir the mud up off the bottom with crankbaits like this and these bright colours, it gets into their territory and they hate it and they want to go and strike it because they're being territorial or they're telling it to go away. Um, they're, not, they're not hitting it to feed on it. All right, so that's why you have to fish it with a bit of pace. Get it in and around them and really aggravate them. If you fish them slow, they get so long to look at the lure that they're so unnatural, they'll just, they'll happily just let it go past. And it's not firing them up enough to kind of get them to want to have a fight. That's kind of the way you should think about reaction style baits. You want to be poking him, annoying him, prodding him with your, these style of baits. And you want to get him to react and lash out. And they can't do that with their fists because they haven't got any. They do that with their mouth. They'll nudge it. They'll headbutt it. They'll come and bite it out of aggravation more than anything. So that's a classic reaction strike when you do have clear water. And try different colours. We've got things like uh, green tomato, which has got a bit of green in it and obviously loads of orange. We've got sort of more see-through ones like this, but like, you know, in clear water, that's almost gonna shine like a beacon with the light that comes through it. It's an amazing reaction style bait. Fire tigers with greens and oranges and yellows, that, you know, pink to a certain degree. But for me, anything with a bit of bright green in it is an absolute winner. So there we go, guys. Um, yeah, match the hatch perch versus roach etc reaction style baits have you got semi clear water have you got clear water or have you got ultra clear water the more ultra clear you've got 
think about really translucent baits um, and finessing everything. And then, yeah, like I said, reaction style baits can work. Those bright colors, but always put a bit of pace on them. So there we go, guys. Hope that helps. Random guy, hope that's answered your question. Um, yeah, if you do want any short ones from me, little bite-sized videos, maybe three to five minutes, um, pop it in the comments below. Put your questions below and I'll try and answer them on the next video. Um, but yeah, if you want shorter ones, just let me know. I can make some shorter ones, but it's not in my nature, really. I love digging into the details. There's always so many interesting things to think about. That's why I love my lure fishing so much. And I hope that's why you're loving it as well. So um, yeah, until then, I'll see you on the next one.